The title of my message today is simply getting consumed with God's presence. Getting consumed with God's presence. One of my observations when it comes to dealing with people on a daily basis is that you learn a lot about people concerning the way that they conduct themselves. Uh, you learn a lot about people when uh, you just observe how they treat people, how they behave, their mannerism, and so forth. And according to how someone act and how they behave, you can also learn a lot about their faith. A person's behavior is always an indicator of what they truly believe, as there's a saying that goes, action speaks louder than words. Because true believers in Christ just don't do certain things. A true believers in Christ just don't act all kinds of ways. A true uh, believers in Christ are humble and that there's a temperament, there's a demeanor, and there's a presence that comes with someone who knows God and someone who knows God's person. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you are around someone, you can feel when someone is sincere. You can feel when someone is genuine and authentic. You can feel when someone is in right standards with God. As Romans 8 and 16, it says, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Not by what they say, but what they do. Not by what the words that come out of their mouth, but by the actions that come from their heart. Not because someone knows scripture or go to church, but what type of fruit are their lives bearing? Is your life a reflection of Christ? Is your life a reflection that you spend time with God? Uh, is your life a reflection that you know God and that God knows you? Or is your life a symbolization of bitterness? Or is your life a symbolization of double-mindedness where you say one thing and you do the totally the opposite of the thing that you say? Are you always grouchy, always in a mood, always negative, and always complaining? What type of fruit are you bearing? Come on, and I've come to the conclusion that there's a lot of people who profess to know God, but they don't know God personally. There are people who know of his works, who have seen God move, who can testify that God is real. But there's a difference in knowing that God is real versus knowing God for real. Do you know God on an intimate level? It's a travesty that people who come to church Sunday after Sunday, but they don't know God for real. It's a travesty that people uh, know the Bible inside and out. But deep down in their hearts, they don't know God for real. These are people, Mr. Hawks, that we call second-hand believers. Meaning that they come to church out their grandmother's experience. Uh, they come to church because uh, they were made to go to church uh, when they were growing up by their grandfathers. And now they come to church out of monotony and vain repetition. Uh, they come to church as a replacement because they don't go to the club anymore off of somebody else's uh, testimony, off somebody else's journey, but they don't know God for real. They've never experienced God on an intimate level. They know his works, but they don't know him. And churches are filled with people who know God at surface level, but they don't know him deep down in their soul, in, a, in depth, in, in an intimate level. Uh, churches are filled with people who are okay with this, going to church and receiving salvation and securing a spot in heaven, uh, uh, but don't put it in the work for more. Uh, they don't sacrifice for more and won't make the commitment for work for more uh, when it comes to the things of God. Uh, there's greater when it comes to having a relationship with God. Uh, there's greater when it comes to your personal relationship with God. And in order to make it during these perilous times, in order to make it in this time filled with turmoil, in order to make it in a world that's filled with so many confusion, in order to be refreshed, renewed, and revitalized, it will require you knowing God on an intimate level by getting consumed with his presence. Because what you did last season to get the victory, it ain't going to work in this season because you got to go deeper into God's presence. What you did to get delivered in your last season is not going to work in this season. You got to go deeper into God's presence. What you did to get free in your last season is not going to work in this season because God is requiring us to get intimate with him. God is requiring us to pray more to 
so that we can get into his presence. God is calling us to fast more so we can get into his presence. God is requiring us not to just read one verse a day, but to read a chapter a day so that we can spend more time with God, so that we can get more consumed with God, so that we can get close to God in his presence. By getting in God's presence, by getting consumed with this presence, so that we can heal with us, saith the Lord. Get consumed with this presence so that we can get guidance and direction when life is hard. Get consumed with this presence so that we can get clarity for our lives. But that just don't happen with basic coming and just going. God is calling us into the deep things of God uh, where there's revelation knowledge that will begin to flow and we're able to tap into the mysteries of God. As the Bible says in Luke 8 and 10, and to us it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Mysteries don't come without knowing God on an intimate level, but by being in his presence. With ideas and inventions don't come without knowing God on an intimate level, but by being in his presence. Secrets don't come from God uh, without being intimate with God, but it comes by being in his presence. God is calling us uh, into a depth in depth relationship with him so that we can go higher into the things of God by being consumed with this Holy Spirit. And as we take a look at this text, you have Moses, who is leading the Israelites, who God is sending them to Canaan, the promised land, a land that's flowing with milk and honey. God is not uh, only sending them, but God has given them provisions along the way. And there's a saying that goes, wherever God guides, he will provide. That's right. And wherever God will send you, he will take care of you on the journey. Whenever God is guiding you, uh, 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 whenever you feel lonely, like there's no one there, uh, you, sh you should still be able to see an extra set of footprints in the sand. Amen. To let you know that you are not alone. That's right. And that God will never leave you nor forsake you. When God has spoken, you don't ever have to worry about being taken care of. Uh, when God has guided you with his presence and with his spirit, you don't have to worry about what you're going to eat. You don't have to worry about how you're going to make it. Because God will always take care of you. Because it's God who has guided you. And one thing that I found out about life, my brothers and sisters, is that when God is guiding you, you can still sense the presence of God no matter what you are going through. Even when your bank account is negative, God will show you that he got your back when God is guiding you with his presence. Even when the door is slammed in your face, God will show you that he is still your provider. Even when you are in a situation where it looks like there's no way out, God will give you comfort and peace by letting you know that everything going to be okay and everything is going to be all right. Amen. The children of Israel, they saw miracles by God uh, uh, using Moses to split the Red Sea. They saw the miracles of God when he provided food for them in the wilderness by sending manna from heaven when they were hungry. Mm -hmm. They saw the miracles of God when Moses hit a rock with his staff and water came gushing out when they were thirsty. They saw the miracles of God protecting them from their enemies when they was on the run and God caused the Egyptians uh, to be utterly destroyed by drowning them. It's a shame for someone to see God move and have experience. God work and they still murmur and they complain. That's right. That's right. God healed your body and you still talking bad about other people. It's a shame when God has provided for you and you still act stubborn. It's a shame when God made a way out of no way but you still won't commit to God and his way to God say, y'all can go on the kingdom. I'm going to separate myself from this group of stiff-necked people who are still stuck in sin, who are still stuck in worship and idols, who are more consumed with the works of God but not by knowing God personally. But God said, I'm still going to drive out the Canaanites. I'm still going to 
going to drive out the Amorites. I'm still going to drive out the Hittites. I'm still going to drive out the Parasites. I'm still going to drive out the Jezebites. Well, my presence is not good. Because God's presence don't dwell in sin. God's presence don't dwell in mess. God's presence don't dwell in filth. God's presence don't dwell in chaos. God's presence don't deal in confusion. God's presence don't dwell in wickedness. That God loved them so much that he said, I'll remove myself from them because my glory will kill them. Because their life is filled with sin. My majesty, my majesty, my power will take them under because of their sin. You can go on, but I'm not going to go with you. I'm still going to send my angel. I'm still going to take care of you. But your sin is in the presence of, your sin is in the way of God's presence. Your lifestyle is in the way of getting to know God on a deeper level. It's you that's stopping you from going into the deeper things of God. Why people are always talking about the enemy busy or the enemy thus talking about the enemy that. But it's you that's stopping you from getting to know God on an intimate level by getting in his presence. One of the worst places you can be on this green earth, Deacon Sloth, is that you, that one of the worst places that you can ever be in life is being in a place where it looks like you are in the promised land and in the presence of the Lord and you're not. There's people uh, with titles that look like they got it all together, but God's presence is not with them. Uh, 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 there's marriages that look like it's glorious, but the presence is not uh, uh, the presence of the Lord is not with them. Uh, there's people who seem like they have this and they have that and they have all of these provisions, but the presence of the Lord is not with them. As you look at Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, where it looked like people like they made it, it looked like people got it going on, it looked like people are flashy and they appear to be something that they're not, but the spirit of the Lord is not moving in their lives. Their lives are not changing. The Lord is not showing his manifested glory in their lives. And the only thing that they can brag about is stuff. But deep down in their heart and their soul, they don't know God for real. That's right, that's right. Come on, Pastor. And it's scary that there's people in ministry that's in love with the work of ministry, but don't know God personally. Mm -hmm. right. It's scary that there's people who wear all of these fancy robes and uh, I have a church, but uh, God's presence is not with them. They didn't spook Moses. That Moses created a place to worship away from the people so that he can get in the presence of God. Moses said, I'm not going to let y'all stop me from getting in the presence of the Lord. Amen. As that leads me to my first point, seek God's face and not his hand. Seek God's face and not his hand. What do you mean, Pastor Vance? Let me help you. When we go to God in prayer, we oftentimes use his prayer as if it's a backup plan and not our primary option. When we go to God in prayer, it's typically so that God can bail us out of some form of crisis or some form of trouble. But whatever happened to getting to know God because he's God? Whatever happened to having a personal relationship with God? A personal relationship meaning that I'm I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm talking to God not because I want something, but simply because I just want to get to know God. As verse number 11, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man, as he was speaking as unto a friend. I am a friend of God. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Because I know God on a face-to-face -face basis. I know God on a personal level. I know God and God knows me. But God said even the hair on your head is numb. Oh, what a friend we have to Jesus. And because I know Jesus as a friend, God will always have my back. Because I know Jesus as a friend, he will always cover me. Because I know Jesus as a friend, he will always provide for me because I know Jesus as a friend. I don't have to worry about what people in the world worry about because I go to God. 
God with sincerity. I go to God with a right heart. I go to the Lord because I don't want nothing. I don't want things. I don't want material things. I seek God's face and I don't seek his face. But it's dangerous. It's dangerous that we treat God like he's a, but just a, a magical genie and not a savior. When we go to God for a car, we go to God for a house. We go to God for stuff. We go to God to try to win the lottery. We treat God like he's a magical genie, but we don't go to God just because. We go to God because we want stuff, but we don't want to get to know him. We want material things, but we don't want to go to God at times just because of who he is. Whatever happened to in Psalms 104, it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but I just want to be close to God. Not because I want something, but because I'm just blown away that I can talk to God and that God can talk back to me. As the text says, he spoke to Moses face to face as unto a friend. And I don't know about you all, but I just want to be in the presence of the creator of heaven and earth. I just want to be in the presence of the great I am. I just want to be in the presence of the one who has all of the power and all of the
as the grapes cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. The Israelites, they know God's work, but they don't know his ways. Neither do they know his presence. They know God at surface level, but they don't know his ways, neither do they know his presence. Have you ever wondered why people go to church and never change? It's because they don't know God's presence. Right. Have you ever wondered how people say they love God, but there's no spiritual evidence that God is working in their lives? It's because they don't know God's presence. Have you ever wondered why it seems like people are always seeking, but never coming to the true knowledge and the power of God? It's because they don't know God's presence. And to know God is to know his ways. But when you are intentional about knowing God's ways, it leads to a life of lackluster effort. A life where there's always one foot in and one foot out. You'll always be on the outside looking in. A stuck in confusion because you haven't made a conscious effort to know God in an intimate way. That you know of God, but you don't know God personally. That's why you are always worried. That's why you are always stressed out. That's why you are always perplexed. It's just some things that people don't worry about when they know God personally. It's just some things that people don't stress when they know God in an intimate, personal way. It's just some things that people don't become overwhelmed about because they know God's way and God's presence will always come when you are in God's way. You are a true servant when you are in God's way. You are a true lover of God's people when you are in God's ways. You are able to forgive others uh, when you are in God's ways. Uh, you are truly uh, at peace when you are in God's ways because uh, his presence can always be found in his will. That the Israelites lived a life in constant panic because they didn't know God uh, intimately by getting in his presence. And here's my third and final point and we are going home. There's a rest that comes with being in God's presence. There's a rest that comes with being in God's presence. You can sleep at night when you're in God's presence. You ain't stressed out and worried when you are in God's presence. You're not overwhelmed, bent out of shape, or burnt out when you are in God's presence. Because verse number 14, it said, and he said, my presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. My presence shall go with you wherever you go. It is me who will give you rest. There's nothing on God's green earth like the presence of God. There's stability in God's presence. There's hope in God's presence. There's restoration in God's presence. There's protection in God's presence. There's redemption in God's presence. You can have all the other things but more than anything on God's green earth, we need God's presence so that we can survive through the trial. We need God's presence so that we can overcome all of the storms in life. We need God's presence so that we can walk in victory. We need God's presence so that when tribulations of life, they come, that we are not overtaken because of God's presence. But most importantly, I need God's presence to go wherever I go because there's rest in his presence. There's a supernatural rest that comes with someone knowing God real on a personal intimate level by being consumed with his presence, by being consumed with his Holy Ghost, by being consumed with his Shekinah glory that comes with rest as Matthew 11 and 28 says. Come unto me, all of you that labor in a heavy labor, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and you shall find rest in your soul. Rest don't come from being in the club. Rest comes from being in God's presence. Rest don't come from drinking and smoking all the time. Rest comes from being in God's presence. Rest don't come from retail therapy and spending your money till you can't spend it no more. Uh, rest comes from being in the presence of the Lord. Rest don't come from eating until your belly ache. Rest comes from 
being in the presence of the Lord. Rest don't come by you playing Texas lottery, Georgia lottery, and Florida lottery. Rest comes from being in the presence of the Lord. And there's no greater place that I would ever want to be on the earth screen earth than to be in the presence of the Lord. Because it's in the presence of the Lord that I'm sick. It's in the presence of the Lord that I'm redeemed. It's in the presence of the Lord that he keeps my mind. It's in the presence of the Lord that he keeps me and my family. It's in the presence of the Lord that he provides for me. It's in the presence of the Lord that there's safety that comes by being in the presence of the Lord by being close to the Lord and knowing the Lord by seeking his face and not seeking his hand. And I will ever and forever and forevermore see God to get to that place of a peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. That only comes by being close to God and being in his presence. And it's found in God by knowing God on a personal level. And in my closing, Moses said that if your presence ain't going, guess what? I ain't going either. That's something you should tell your friends. Is the presence of the Lord going to be there? Because if the presence of the Lord ain't going to be there, I ain't going. I'm afraid to go somewhere where the presence of the Lord ain't in. I'm afraid to be around people, places, and the things where the spirit of the Lord ain't moving. Moses said, Lord, if you ain't leaving me and your presence ain't going, guess what? I ain't going either. And that should be your state to claim with somebody. Are you going to a party? Is the presence of the Lord going to be there? Are you going to hang out at such and such that they kick back? Is the presence of the Lord going to be there? Are you going to hang out at the bar? I ain't going to know what the presence of the Lord ain't there. Because when I step away from God's presence, then I'm stepping outside of God's will. And God is not obligated to protect you when you're outside his will. But God will. But God will. But God will. Because in the text, he still sent an angel. Mm -hmm. He still provided for them. But he said, I got to remove my spirit because my spirit is too powerful and they like this with sin. It'll kill them mm -hmm. that the spirit is so strong. Mm -hmm. That in, uh, Moses was so consumed with the presence of the Lord and the glory of God that in verse number 9 and 10, that when they walked into the tabernacle, they saw the glory of God on him. They saw the glory of the Lord to see him. Do people see the glory of the Lord on your life when you walk through the hall? Do people see the glory of God on your life whenever you speak to others? Do people sense and feel the presence of the Lord and the glory of the Lord when they are around you? Or do they feel icky? Or do people feel like, shout her energy off. It's just something off with her. Do, do, do people feel that you are spending time with God for real? Or are you a person that people say, I don't want to be around them because they always bitter, they always nagging, they always complaining, and I don't want to be around no negative energy if the Spirit of the Lord ain't there. That they saw the glory of the Lord on Moses. That they witnessed it with their own eyes. You wonder why you toss and turn so much at night? It's because of lifestyle. And because you're not consumed with God's presence. As Isaiah 48 and 22 says in my closing, there's no rest for the wicked. There's no peace for those who are not living right that's on the outside of God's will. Right. And my greatest fear is to be doing something without God's presence. I'm afraid to be outside of God's will. Some people don't have a problem with playing with God. I'm afraid to play with God. Amen. Because his power it can consume you and utterly destroy you. I just want to be in God's will. I just want to be in God's presence. I just want to be in God's spirit. Because if God ain't going, ain't going evil. And if my relationship with God ain't welcome, it ain't an opportunity for me. I'm not going to make me work on Sunday. I worship the Lord on Sunday. I'm not going to put nothing before my relationship with God. Because God's presence for my protection, my health, my wellness, and what the Lord is doing in my life, that's more important than anything on God's green earth. You can keep the money, you can keep the stuff, you can keep the car out of the stuff. I just want to be in God's presence. Because that's the most valuable thing that we can have as believers. The Spirit of the Lord has spoken. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, here's an opportunity to come.